Hi guys, I'm Philippe, Philippe Lewicki, captain of After Now. And uh, today I want to talk to you, with you guys about the dream world and dream glasses. So this is a device, uh, it's an augmented reality device, and it's a headset that you uh, put on your head. So to be able to merge reality with virtual reality. So, um, here's the hardware. You can see that um, it's fairly simple in itself. Uh, it feels, when you touch it, you may not see it, but it feels very cheap. Um, it doesn't feel, uh, uh, I would say like the Meta, for example, that the glitter element on it, or the design of the HoloLens 2, which is beautiful. It feels much more simple and, and light. And even when you move like this little dial in the back, you know, the crank, I don't have it for a long time, but it's very uh, noisy. And that's probably a long-term point of failure. So that's on the overall outside and feel of the device. Uh, one thing is there's a little cushion here. Actually, a pretty those little pads here are pretty well done. Yes. They're very uh, thick. And they feel like very, uh, they feel very comfortable and they're very smooth to touch. Um, so that's all on this. Additionally, let's go back on the more detailed hardware side and spec for that. Um, I won't go into the details of the uh, spec, but you can see the way the screen works. So the screen is uh, actually displaying a total of um, 1200 by 1600 um, pixels. And uh, you can see there are two here. They show two and they reflect in those little uh, lenses inside here. And then after there's this cover that protects it. Uh, there's an additional sensor that's on the device. Um, one is for the end gesture and the other one is the RGB camera. There is no uh, built-in slam uh, like on Magic Leap or HoloLens. For that, you need to add an additional uh, device uh, and tracking called the Nolo. And uh, that will make the, the additional tracking. And Nolo will be part of another um, review. For now, what we're going to do is going to try this device on. And I'll give you my feedback on the field, field of view, another look of that nature. Oh, and there's, a, there's no speaker built in. And there's like a little jack here for putting your own speakers. That's in this side of the device. OK, so let's get started. We're going to plug this. So it comes like this. There's an adapter for this that will go either on your PC or on your laptop, on your uh, phone. So the device works with a phone or a PC computer. In our case, we don't have the adapter for the phone, so we're going to use the PC. And here is, I'm trying to tangle this. Here it is. The plug is in there. And then that's it. Then you plug this one on your USB 3. This guy is in there. And then this one goes here. The HDMI. So now both are plugged in. You have to plug the USB-C first. That's in all of their instructions. And yes, now it works. I can see the... OK, I'm going to choose that to myself. So the wear of the device is interesting. Um, there is a little uh, sensor here that turn off the device, turn on the screen as soon as I remove the headset. And when I put the headset on, it turns back on the screen. So that works pretty well, and it's fairly efficient. So. The wear of the device, you have to put this really actually, what I've learned is that you put down as much as you can. And the the, for, the forehead need to sit on this and avoid touching anything else. And that's the best for the comfort on that device and the optimum field of view. Okay. So the field of view feels really good. Uh, it feels like, you know, you have this like big block in front of you. Uh, a visual, yeah, it's about this for me, like right now. Um, so it's a really decent field of view uh, for uh, in terms of the feel of it. 
and uh, it feels pretty good. Now, this device is really not made for consumer. Uh, at this point, uh, there is no app, nothing. Uh, the only app that you can have is an app for watching YouTube video on your phone. And um, that's probably a very good use case for that device, but uh, it's not very useful for enterprise application, I would say, or other consumer applications like games or things. So this is um, one limitation is that that device works only if you're a developer, because then you have access to the SDK and all those elements. So I'm going to show you now uh, the different uh, SDK, and I'm going to try the app from inside. So let's get started with uh, the instructions that are given to us. So if you go on uh, the website of uh, Dream Glasses, you will be able to have on the developer page all the instructions to uh, get started. And um, it's a Unity SDK, and it will work for publishing on Windows as well as publishing on uh, the Android platform. The SDK itself um, and the instructions are straightforward, and I would say they work uh, if you follow them uh, carefully. Uh, the only thing I was not get able to get to work is the end gesture, and we'll get to it in a second. Uh, but their, exa their example they provide are pretty uh, complete and work really well. Um, the thing is that we're going to get into the SDK itself, so you can see all those instructions there. Uh, and uh, there's some uh, limitation there. Uh, so you get access to the SDK by sending them an email. So you have to ask to the support a request, and then they'll send you a Google Drive link. And in that, you'll have access to the different um, documentations, video instructions, and, and for sure, what's most important, the Unity package you will need for the SDK to integrate in your own apps. Um, there is the, a few sample apps. Uh, for one, you have the Nolo for the six degree of freedom, the PC itself, and the Android. And, um, and that's it. And that's the app to watch Android uh, videos from the YouTube from your phone. So, now, what we're going to do, we're going to get uh, to the Unity uh, editor. So I loaded everything on the 2019.1. Um, I think that's why the gesture don't work. Um, so I didn't join grid edit yet. I'll try maybe on another video. But for now, I loaded the, the Unity package provided. And you can see it provides a number of, uh, of cool features. So this is the Dreamworld Unity package. And here says what you have inside it. So inside, you have a few examples and uh, with three scenes. So the one I've compiled and tested on is the end gesture interaction scene. Um, so I wanted to test that and see elements around that. Um, you have a few scripts that are interesting. They provide and they can be useful. Uh, simple script. But when you look into it, this is all you have. It is also in the newer world version a cool feature to be able to cast, uh, record what you're saying to the camera. So that's what we're going to use, so you guys can see what I'm doing in this. Uh, so that's the app. It's a very simple app with a cube that will interact with our ends. Uh, that will not fully work, but you'll be able to see some content in there, and we're kind of, we're going to be able to analyze that uh, and get that into the detail. So you can see there some of the sample scene I have in there. We have a, we have a little cube with some uh, elements and the interactions for the end gestures here on the right um, that you can program and automatically interact with. Uh, the camera has a number of cool features and you can attach a fair number of script here uh, that works for uh, managing the rotations and the angles. So let's get started and start this uh, sample app that uh, we've uh, created in Unity and compiled. So, It's loading, and I think it's recording now. So guys, you could probably see what I'm seeing. Um, so you have this little uh, cube. Let me just get something so you can... Oh. Okay, I have a little bit of a hard time focusing on the...
Okay, something is a little bit off, um, but I'll go with it. Uh, so uh, I can see the, the cube there, and um, if I move the little cursor, you see this little cursor in front of me all the time. If I put that little cursor on the cube, it moves. And if I try to um, do the gesture, for some reason, they don't work, but those are the gesture. So let me show you them. Uh, so you have this, that would be the click, um, and this will be the bloom. Um, and that's uh, one of the textures, so if you do that, should do something, and that should do something. Uh, the other um, gesture is uh, the grab. So basically, you close your fist like this to grab the object. Um, in this case, for some reason, they, work, they don't work. I assume it's the Unity version, uh, but those are the ones that are tested. Uh, I remember in an older setup that they were working, um, they were not very responsive, and uh, it was very disturbing because if you would grab an object and you're on three degree of freedom and sort of move around, you move your hands with the head and the object. It was something that really doesn't work, especially when you're used to six degree of freedom on other headsets. Um, so that's for the end gesture and the three degree of freedom limitation. The other big limitation there is on that device is performance. Um, so you don't see that that much in the, when you look at the render that I'm looking at, for example, um, but there is, uh, something that's very annoying in terms of the movement. When I move, there's a lag and the object takes like a, probably, I don't know, a little bit of time to come to the position I want him to come. So in the end, it pretty much stays where it's supposed to stay, if I go like this. But if I get you know, into it, I can see the object not as responsive in terms of alignment between my motion of the head and the eye that's looking at. So eye to display um, is, uh, is lagging on this device. And that's not about the performance. I have a very, very powerful computer here. Uh, I have a 2080. Uh, GTX from uh, so it should be able to sustain that type of uh, there is better. that type of uh, setup, um, but for some reason it doesn't. So uh, and I think it's related to some of the hardware limitation we have on those displays. Uh, so that's probably one of the big block I see with that technology and that device. So I would, uh, so that's the sample scene that we have and uh, with three degree of freedom. So to conclude, I will um, go over a few, let me try to close this right now. So it's not too editing, there we go. So we'll go over a final conclusion on this and uh, on that device. So. The device has an amazing field of view. The resolution is decent. Um, the hardware limitation on performance for, uh, you would think that the performance are only linked to your computer, but there are actually a number of performance related to the motion to display and other factors like uh, and gesture recognitions that are not working really, really well. Um, and to be able to have that in large uh, deployment, I would think that we need those to be working. So in some use cases, uh, this could be a very good device because it's inexpensive and uh, easy to, to wear. Um, feels cheap, but uh, it actually works. The display and what you see through that display works. So in a stationary situation um, and a three degree freedom motion, uh, like in a theater, I think that something could be actually useful and have some augmentations and information. Uh, will we use it uh, compared to other devices that we use uh, for uh, our other project, our clients, and what we would advise people to use? We would not. Uh, due to that limitations and the performance on the time to display, and the fact that the, everything looks wobbly when I'm looking into it, uh, makes it uh, not viable for uh, real deployment. 
uh, and even for a proof concept, if we need to impress some executives, uh, this will have a lag that will probably turn them off. So that's the conclusion. Uh, I think there is a lot of promise in those type of device uh, where the light display and you use CPUs or phone for contact. And uh, this is an early generation. So hopefully the next generation of those devices uh, will solve those problems. And I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, don't forget to uh, follow us.